Hey everyone, and welcome back to Soul Reaver 2. This is Leading Man. And I'm the Akari Warrior. It's good to have you back. It's good to be back. So, this is your first time with Soul Reaver 2. How's it look? Uh, looking good. I've been, I've been following the LP from the, uh, from the start, though. There have been, uh, I've been kind of, you know, WTFing along with you. Yeah, there's a, quite a, quite a lot of that here. Um, and speaking of which, we're gonna have our first moments. Yeah, you got a cool axe and what the hell? Yeah, he definitely stabs him with the blunt end of that thing. And not only, it's just everything is wrong with that axe. The shape, the way it works, I don't know, that thing is just wrong. Lazy axe. Serious. So we'll just leave it there. The the thing is, is that they actually had a really awesome axe spear in uh, video three that with the uh, in the light shrine, or video four. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's actually my favorite weapon. And I'm I'm surprised they didn't go that route with these with these axes as well. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, I'm I'm really surprised they didn't actually do more work with the Demon Hunters. I suppose it's just because they're sort of mid-level enemies and they don't last that long. They just kind of glazed over them. They all even have the exact same armor. Yeah, they... Man, the, the character design took a hit. I mean, damn, on the one hand, you have all these, all these different vampire hunters and demon hunters and all that, right? But you don't have, uh... So you have these interesting interplay with different kinds of weapons, but it was just so much more entertaining to fight the different kinds of vampires in the original Reaver. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, the, my biggest problem here is the fact that uh, every single enemy basically behaves identically except for the guys with guns who shoot you, obviously. But everybody else, they there's no like moment where you see a Melkayim and it just dives into the ground and appears on the other side of the screen. Um, the closest you get to that is the demons, and they're pretty, pretty standardized too. Well, them and the them and the uh, the uh, vampire uh, enemies in the shrines, those guys who are burrowing around. Right. Although they don't really burrow either; they just burrow when they're getting close. Right. And yes, another cutscene at the pillars because we need one more. I just thought him kicking the door open was hilarious looking. These were the pillars so familiar to my blighted eyes. But now that I had begun to learn their true significance, I regarded the pillars' destruction with a new, enlightened sense of horror. And I questioned now whether Cain's simple refusal, his mere ambition, could truly have caused such devastation. I felt that some darker influence was at work here. As I approached, I discerned the spirit of Ario, bound here now for more than a century. Forever am I bound, hope abandoned, my spirit tethered to this place. What destroyed the circle could not touch me, for I was newly dead and beyond harm's reach. I alone was spared the descent into madness, and Cain alone was spared the pain of death. When Nepraptor's poison seized Cain even in the safety of the womb, much more than just his destiny was lost. All of Norsgoth lost balance. Consider us now, both of us less than we once were. I, pure but insubstantial, and Cain terribly real, but corrupted. Your imprisonment here has deranged you, spirit. You fixate on Cain because you believe he is the teller that binds you here. You both know he is not the author of your agony. The pillars were subverted by dark forces, invited by the guardians themselves. The more I learn of your circle, the more I see a tangle of nested manipulations. Cain handed them their victory. They sought to topple the pillars, and he was their willing instrument. Or was he their unwilling pawn? Would it blunt your wrath to know that Cain's dilemma was calculated to bring the pillars down, regardless of the choice he made? 
and that the devastation would have been even greater had he chosen the path you would prescribe for him. You are a subtle, deceitful creature. But your clever arguments do not absolve Cain. He must die for the pillars to be restored. There is no other way. Then consider this more ominous possibility. What if Cain's death does not restore the pillars? Consider that it may simply be too late, that this world may be beyond redemption, and that you may be bound here eternally. me, demon. You can see that I am captive here. Show me some mercy. Like the mercy you showed your fellow guardians when you set Cain on them? Or the mercy you showed Cain when you kept him ignorant of his destiny while you used him as the scourge of the circle? Or perhaps like the mercy you showed your beloved Napraptor when you made him Cain's first kill? You are cruel. Why do you torment me? Merely looking for answers, I am. Ah, very well. I'll leave you in peace. But know this about you and this purgatory from which you long to escape. You're merely at the threshold.